Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the service of worship at St. Martin's United Church. We're very pleased that you chose to worship with us here this morning. My name is Darren Wolf. I'm one of the ministers at St. Martin's, uh, along with Keith Hall and Michael Webster. Uh, oddly enough, neither Keith Hall nor Michael Webster are here this morning. Uh, Michael is taking a short break, a one day break, before uh, Holy Week. And so he'll be ready for all the services. And Keith got back just yesterday from his 14 day uh, leadership module in Winnipeg. And amazingly enough, he didn't feel like he wanted to come to church this morning after 14 days. Hmm. So he's having a break until tomorrow. And uh, as a guest speaker today, we have Brian Walton, and he will be leading worship for us today, and we're very glad to have him here. St. Martin's is an affirming congregation of the United Church of Canada, which means that we welcome all people here without exception. And so we hope that you do feel welcome here. If you are new here, a special welcome. There are people who are wearing these lovely uh, blue ribbon stickers, and they would be happy to answer any questions you have about St. Martin's. The sign on the corner of Clarence and Wilson says that children are welcome and noise is expected. And that's exactly what we mean. So we welcome children and their noise and we welcome adults and their particular brand of noise as well. And we would invite you to uh, join us after the service for tea and coffee in the area that we call the lounge. Um, a piece of scripture that's been uh, increasingly important to me over, well, probably over the last decade, but more and more in the last few years, is a little piece of scripture that comes from the small uh, book of the Bible called the first letter of John. And it goes like this, God is love. And whoever lives in love lives in God and God lives in them. So in this world where we struggle sometimes to understand who or what God is, I find this little piece of scripture very informative, that when we meet and experience love, we meet and experience God. Let's hope that happens here today. I'd invite you to pray with me once the prayer is on the screen. Today, as we ponder Palm Sunday, surprise us with the power of the gospel, challenge us with the example of Jesus, call us to live our life with passion, cause us to be agents of love and justice until we breathe and the world breathes with new life. Amen and amen. <clears throat> Would you join with me in the prayer of reconciliation as it comes up on the screen? Source of love, you come to us in the midst of human relationship, seeking to mend our ways and to incline us toward peace. We believe that you are to be found in our neighbor, yet sometimes we turn our back on our neighbor. We believe that you are to be found in our families, Yet sometimes we take our most precious for granted. We believe that you are to be found in the stranger. Yet sometimes we avert our eyes from your gaze. Speak boldly to us, calling us away from selfishness and into the generosity of your love. Remembering the compassion of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble 
and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Thanks be to God. Would you join me in prayer? May the words which I speak this morning combine with the thoughts that fill your minds and hearts, that together we might discern the way of Jesus for our own living. Amen. light of God. We are marching in the light of God. As Uencha didn't know where her son was, she'd asked his friends, she'd asked her neighbors, she'd asked the police. He was 22, and he was a student and he was missing. She was afraid, desperate, sad. Times were tough in Argentina in the late 1970s. A military government ruled the people with an iron fist, and students, who were often one of the voices of opposition, they went missing. And now Azuencha's son was missing. Soon she heard about Berta. Berta's child was also missing. Rumors were that the military would round up these dissidents, put them in a helicopter, fly them over the Atlantic Ocean, and push them out. Was it true? Where were their children? Soon these two women met more families, more women whose children were missing, more people filled with confusion and grief. Gradually four women, led by Azuencha, decided they needed to protest. But how could women, middle-aged women, women without power, in a country that was very patriarchal. How could they make themselves heard? They decided to march. They decided to take pictures of their children and hold them in front of them and go down the road to the palace, the government's palace. And then, well, they didn't know what they'd do but they had to do something. On April 30th, 1977, Azuencha and 13 other women went to the Plaza de Mayo, a courtyard, if you will, in front of the government palace. Soldiers told them to keep moving, and so they did, around and around the plaza, holding up the pictures of their children. The first time was terrifying. People were confused. And they went home. But then they decided they needed to go back the next week. They began walking in non-violent demonstrations every Thursday. And as they walked, they chanted, We want our children. 
We want you to tell us where they are. The mother's nonviolent marches drew international attention. Human rights groups arrived in Argentina. They opened up an office. They published a newspaper. They coached the women on how to give speeches. Although the police continued to harass them, it became more difficult for the government to ignore this moral presence of mothers standing firm with their children's faces before them. Although the military regime in Argentina has long since been replaced by a democratic government, I read that women still meet every Thursday at 3.30 in the afternoon in the Plaza de Mayo to raise up the call for justice, justice in that country. I believe that protest marches are a spiritual practice. At least that's what I take away from the Palm Sunday story. It's easy, I think, to get lost in the seemingly festive nature of people waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna. But make no mistake. This was a protest march, and God was riding the donkey. The Jews who were part of this Palm Sunday protest knew their scriptures well. Hundreds of years earlier, the nation of Israel had been overrun by Babylon, their citizens taken off into captivity. And in that era of oppression, one of their prophets said these words. Your king is coming, you who are slaves. Your king is coming, triumphant and victorious, but humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This king will cut off the chariots of the enemy, defeat the war horses of the enemy, break the bow of the enemy. The Jews waving those palm branches on that Palm Sunday were enslaved again because of course it was Rome who had invaded their country this time. Rome, the greatest power in the ancient world, had gone in, overrun their army, taken over their land, appointed a puppet dictator, and charged them exorbitant taxes. And so these Jews watching Jesus, they remembered. They remembered the ancient prophet. They wanted a king, a rebel leader, who would overthrow Rome. And so they shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Jesus was a Jew. And he knew the scriptures probably even better than those on the streets. And I don't believe that he asked for a donkey by accident. I don't believe that he rode that donkey into the seat of power by accident. I don't believe that this Jesus who once told his friends to keep quiet now allowed the adulating crowds around him to shout Hosanna. I don't think he did that by accident. Jesus was on a protest march. The day after the march, he overturned the money changers in the temple and offered up challenging and controversial teachings to all who would listen. Oh, 
marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. Martin Luther King Jr. had read the teachings of Jesus. He was a pastor. And he knew about being exploited by the powerful. Black employment, unemployment was high in the 1960s. Most African Americans made only the minimum wage. And segregation was still at work, especially in the southern states. King had preached sermons, lobbied government, even endured humiliation and rest. Now it was time to march. On August 28, 1963, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference organized a march on Washington. They'd hoped for 100,000 people. 200,000 showed up to share a day of speeches and songs and prayers led by civil rights leaders and clergy and even entertainers. It was a turning point in the civil rights movement. New legislation was enacted after that march. It was an event like none other. That is, not until the Women's March of this year. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. As we know, on January 21st of this year, 500,000 women, 500,000 women and men filled that same space that Martin Luther King and his many colleagues filled that day outside near the Washington Monument. 500,000 women and men and close to five million people the world over marching against a growing international rhetoric that advances racism and religious discrimination and suggests that economic priorities should be larger than human ones. So what makes a march spiritual? How do we discern God's presence in our midst? Where are we called to wave palm branches today? Let us return for a moment to that original palm parade. Unlike the kind of king that the ancient prophet had spoken about, unlike the kind of revolutionary leader that the zealots of the day were wanting, the donkey stands out as a symbol of how God would choose to reign, humble, abandoning the power of might for the power of love. Jesus knew that the only way to really make peace was to revolutionize the heart. And so despite his anger with the money changers, Jesus took love to Gethsemane. Despite his arrest and impending execution, Jesus took love to Golgotha. Whatever else the resurrection might mean, it means that love cannot be, will not be defeated. When marchers are spirit-inspired, when the God who is love lives within them, they know that they will not ultimately be defeated. They know that sooner or later, love will prevail. One of the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo said, and I quote, to demand human rights is a revolutionary act. But this revolution, this one, is about freedom. 
It is said that the youngest protester to speak at the Women's March on January 21st was named Sophie Cruz. She was six years old. And when she was given the microphone to speak, she said this, Let us fight with love, faith, and courage so that our families will not be destroyed. I want to tell children we are not alone. There are many people that have their hearts filled with love. Sophie Cruz concluded, God is with us. Of course, we all know Martin Luther King's speech at the Freedom March. I have a dream. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but rather by the content of their character. I have a dream, he went on, to quote another prophet, that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain and place of power shall be made low and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. I have a dream, he said, that with faith we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. What is our dream as the people of God in this place? Where are we called to march? Where should we wave the palm branches of love and justice? I know that Dale Armstrong has marched on the offices of the Immigration Department to demand, to demand freedom for Hamad and Halima, for Abdul and Akilah, for Abel and Johanna. I know that 20 or few more of you marched on the city streets in February, joining others in the coldest night of the year march to raise money and awareness for homelessness. I know some of you probably marched around this very room in the blanket exercise to learn and show solidarity with the indigenous peoples of our land. I know some of you marched to Mexico to learn from the people there and to help them build gardens. I know some of you are marching even now to mailboxes and MLA offices to oppose the dehumanizing aspects of this provincial budget. These marches are a spiritual practice when the God of love is in our midst pleading for justice, for an end to racial discrimination, for the elimination of xenophobia, for a return of governments to the task of caring for their citizens instead of applying the ethics of business. Make no mistake. Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter morning, and oh, yes, Easter morning is a time when the love of God speaks truth to power and says, love will not be defeated. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. May the power of love reign in our world. Amen. Go forth into this week, into the places where you work or play or live in community. And may the God who is love flow through you to bring about God's reign of justice and love for all. Amen.
song flow through us, bringing strength to move on. Through change, through challenge, we'll greet the new dawn. Spirit God, be our song. Spirit God, be our breath, be our song. Love through us, bringing strength to move on. Through change, through challenge, we'll greet the new dawn.